Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host, he prefers his cherries, Stemmed, the ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, welcome to the podcast, getting ever so close to that magical 100th episode. We're actually gonna do it live. Live 100th episode. And we're very, very grateful for all of the sponsors that have helped us produce all of this content for you. Free content that is consumed by ice cream lovers, both those who wanted to get into the business, those who have ice cream shops, and really just ice cream lovers all around the world. Today's sponsor is iRice. Now, iRice, based on the east coast of the United States, have been making water ice products for many, many years. Again, a family-owned business. Now they do all sorts of toppings, fudges, bases, everything you need to flavor ice cream or top ice cream you'll find at iriceco.com. I'll say that in American for you, iriceco.com, I-R-I-C-E-C-O.com, a link down below. Uh, And again, I would encourage you to go to scoopschool.com, fill out the form on our podcast tab for your opportunity to win our 100th episode extract prize pack. We're gonna send it straight to you. We're gonna pick that winner on our 100th episode. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about your equipment manuals. We are very grateful for all of the companies that send equipment to us for you to train at Scoop School. So the Scoop School experience basically is you can come and do a class here, you can come and do a single day consulting, or you can come and take part of one of our classes and we do a very hands-on experience where our students can get the opportunity to work on a number of different manufacturers' machines. And again, all those companies that send machines, we very, very much appreciate their uh, help. Now, I am heading off to do a consulting job. I happen to print out a uh, Taylor Model C722 operator's manual, and I'm gonna do a little bit of reading, a bit of casual reading on the flight on the way over to help this gentleman open and grow his business. And it had me think about where is your operator's manual? If you think about whatever machine that you are running, whatever brand, in here in class we run Stolting, we run Electrofreeze, we run Carpajani, and we run Taylor, as well as a recently acquired Emory Thompson machine. And I am making sure that every time I get an operator's manual, every time a piece of equipment comes into the facility or into my store, I make sure that this operator's manual is in a container where I can access all of them immediately for a number of different reasons. Number one is that you may have the opportunity to have a relatively new hire or an assistant manager who's gonna take over the role of cleaning, assembling, operating that unit to read this manual. I can't stress that enough. So having the manual close by, somewhere that it's easily accessible is very, very important. Your warranty information is in here your service and support information is in here. There's a wealth of knowledge in this manual, and I just feel a lot of people, just as soon as they get the machine, they take this, they put it in a drawer at the back of the store, and it's never to be seen again. Probably the one of the most important reasons for you to know where your manual is, is because your health department officer or your ag officer, agricultural department officer, may come into the store and request a copy of your manual. If someone's made a complaint about your business to the health department, and the health department visits, or if it's just a routine visit, each health department generally has the the power to ask and peruse your operations manual and your operator's manual for all of your equipment. So it's really important to keep all of this, this manual somewhere very close and easily accessed, not only for your employees, but if someone from the health department asks for a copy of it or asks to see it. The last thing you want if someone makes a complaint about your business, why be tired if that ever happens, is the health department coming in and saying, hey, where is the uh, manual for this piece of equipment? And you're rummaging around in the back of the store trying to find out where you put it. Even if you saved it, you may have thrown it away. I go to a lot of different places where I ask for the machine manuals, they just don't know where they are. So here's the assignment for this episode of the podcast. If you still have your machine manual, put it in a binder, put it somewhere near the front of the store where you're keeping your important documents, so that you can refer to it, your employees can refer to it, or you can present it if requested. Uh, If you don't have it, either contact your local distributor to get a copy of it, or print it from offline, or online, I should say. Very, very important document. It doesn't get the respect it deserves, I feel, in the ice cream business. So, thank you for tuning in, folks. Nice and easy one, but important nonetheless. 
Again, thank you to our episode sponsor, which is iRice, uh, Rod Oranger and the whole crew there at iRice. Great people, appreciate your sponsorship. Keep on scooping, folks, and we'll see you in the next episode.